talking about uh, objective ways uh, to monitor training and using technical tools uh, to help monitor training in a sport that is primarily a judge sport. And so the first thing I want to talk about is um, using video to objectively monitor on-hill train performance and uh, specifically using Darfish in the action. And so, uh, could you maybe elaborate how you feel that having video uh, on the training site benefits when compared with video review after training? You know how we operate and I think uh, I just see a lot more value in, in being able to show the athletes in the moment uh, what their what their performance looks like and have that feedback uh, available to them before they go and you know take their next go at uh, you know top to bottom run or whatever component of their performance we're training on that particular day it's just far more effective to be able to to take that feedback and try to do something with it within a training session than to go home and look at it at night and try to you know take notes and or mental notes and make those changes you know the subsequent day it's just uh, much more effective to be able to try to make those changes and for the athletes to understand and see the changes they need to make mm -hmm. in the moment. So how do you keep it objective versus making it like subjective because it's obviously pretty easy if you're watching the video and the athletes are watching the video for it to become uh, like about more about opinions like how, how do you find ways to keep it objective? <clears throat> well just based on our uh, you know our technical goals for each guy and and the judging criteria of our sport to, to a certain degree it's always going to be uh, somewhat subjective but uh, I mean that really that's no different than the subjectivity of our verbal coaching mm -hmm. and uh, the, you know this for this camp where we are now in Zermatt this time of year it's more about complete kind of competition rehearsals so it's uh, each guy will have one or two technical goals, which has been fairly consistent throughout the, the entire off season. So we'll look at uh, you know what their body position looks like, or what you know what their skis are doing, uh, to see if it's consistent with what they've been working on. But more in this camp, we'll look for just the mistakes, the kind of the no brainers that the kids recognize as uh, errors that will be judging deductions from their, their points that they're allotted if it were a com competitive run. So mm -hmm. so in that sense, you know, there's definitely some subjectivity to it, but it's it's as objective as we can be. Excellent. And that kind of brings to uh, the next um, the next point here is you guys uh, provide run scores at the end of each training day and obviously that's something that can be can be objective or subjective, and it's difficult to make that to make that objective and to be unbiased with that. How is it that you evaluate their performances afterwards um, to keep it objective as possible? Is there any criteria you use? Uh, well, we just we would judge like for this camp, we'll judge our 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 runs uh, the same as we think the judges would score them. So it's kind of a, a bit of a combination, I guess. It's a bit of a hybrid. Mm -hmm between uh, the judging criteria and how I believe the majority of World Cup judges would score mm -hmm. the runs versus how I think they should be scored. And, and there are some subtle differences yeah. and uh, I think in the big picture we want to have you know the best, the strongest skiers, the strongest technical performances that we can have. So in that in that sense, we can't totally rely on just the judges' criteria. I think in some ways we need to be a little more picky on the technical side. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need to be um, a little simpler on the judging side. So it's really, it's a very, it's a very simple sport. And, uh, well, <laughs> for us, it's, uh, you know, it's simple how we arrive at a score. It's not maybe to, you know, to the spectator, to the layman, it's not super obvious right away, but uh, someone that doesn't know our sport standing at the bottom of the run and watching it for the first time would still largely be able to pick out the winners and the best runs. It's, you know, it's 
it's very aesthetically based and you're going for, you know, the common themes in athletics of just, you know, speed and power and grace and on the acrobatic side, just, you know, the height of the jump mm -hmm. and just how athletic, how smooth it is in the air, how how controlled the landings are. So it's pretty, you know, it's uh, at first glance it may not seem simple, but when you watch it and relate it to the judging criteria, mm -hmm. it's pretty straightforward. It's not, there's nothing complicated where, you know, you ever should wonder, you know, why someone with a seemingly much lesser performance would be ranked ahead of somebody else. So like that, at the uh, highest levels when we really get nitpicky, it for sure happens like any judge sport, but it's relatively straightforward. Right, right. So like the same, the groups of athletes you'd be able to pick out at least within plus or minus one or two placings generally or? Yeah. Yeah, generally, well, for sure, placings wise, even the scores, you know, for the most part, every once in a while there'll be a surprise, but, and sometimes the scale, you have to adjust mm -hmm. the scale. Uh, you know, sometimes if it's a tougher course, the judges might be a little tougher on the scale than I would in judging the training runs. Right. But I, I've been surprised at just how consistent my scoring and our, you know, not just myself, but our coaching staff, how, how consistent our, our scoring has been with. The judges in competition. It's sometimes our scores are a little higher, sometimes they're a little bit lower. Right. So there is some adjustment in the scale, but you know the scale. The judges are pretty consistent with right. how they rank their evaluation of the different components yeah. of our performances. So you you score um, competition runs as well. We get a good idea of how the competition runs score because we score the training runs right. during the week leading up to the right. event. So sometimes I will go. Uh, I'll go and score. Usually, when I score the actual competition run, right, it's yeah. A, I'm not satisfied with uh, if I want more information mm -hmm. than what the judges' scores alone would would give me, and I'll go back and rescore it just to see where exactly I took the points. Mm -hmm. And uh, or if I am upset about mm -hmm. a score, or, you know, a ranking, I'll go. And quite often, when I am upset initially, I'll go and watch it and say, okay. Yeah, fair enough. I can see why they gave it that score. Right, right. I suppose if you're kind of got that emotion, that competition, it's pretty easy to focus on, you know, certain aspects and kind of well, block quite out often, other yeah, parts. Quite often we don't see, you know, <laughs> yeah, as yeah, you know, true. we don't yeah. see the whole run, especially yeah. from the top of the course. And, yeah. uh, or sometimes we, you know, we, we do see the whole run, but just that perspective from right. watching it from behind versus watching it from in front doesn't always look the same and you do notice things from the judge's perspective that you may not notice from the top of the court. So. Yeah. Well, fair enough. Um, so yeah, the other thing you do guys do though is measure jump amplitude, like jump height, jump times. Yeah, the times of the yeah. runs, the times, yeah, jump amplitude, like the air time. And yeah. Yeah. We definitely see, uh, I think, uh, both purely in technical terms and uh, related to the judging scores there's a relationship between the amount of time in the air and the score. There's a mm -hmm. relationship between how much time you take in the air and your ability to do something properly, technically correct. So uh, that's been that's been good. It's been useful as a, uh, giving the athletes sort of a minimum criteria mm -hmm. for what we expect right. you know, to jump on mm -hmm. any given course, any given jump on any given course, and all, it it breeds that healthy competition within the team too. The guys trying to outdo each other, always trying to one up yeah. their teammates. Yeah. So they push each other, and that's just kind of more fuel for that that sort of uh, competition within the team. Excellent, cool. And then, uh, so the last the last piece uh, just want to talk about is um, you guys also monitor um, athlete body weight and vertical jump height on a daily basis when you have access to them, at least at camps and competitions, um, kind of as a means of monitoring uh, health or fatigue or just to make sure that they're fit or whatever it happens to be. I'm sure there's many different rationales for it. Um, how do you use that information to kind of uh, dictate what you're doing in the training and competition? So we take the jump scores and we'll, we'll, you know, basically just use that as a sort of semi-reliable measure for what the, 
the physical state is of the athletes on any given day. And that's something that was suggested to me a long time ago by some of the guys that have come in and consulted with me. Mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, even back when I was coaching BC team, there, there is Van Bolle, mm -hmm. that was one of the things he recommended. Steve Norris, when he was working with us, he, that was one of the, the simple things that he suggested we could use as a reliable daily physical monitor mm -hmm. measure. And uh, it was just kind of one of those things that was always a real pain, pain in the butt to try to do. As opposed to, you know, in the old days, there were jump mats or, you know, the off and jump, we had an off and jump system, which was super finicky with the software, with computers. So to do it with a dark fish, for sure there's some, you know, some room for human error. But, you know, we've, in having you measure the jumps versus Adrian King and double checking work yeah. and versus myself or Tagger, we know that the bat probably, I can say for sure statistically, but, you know, probably 95% of the time or more we're going to be within a centimeter. So yeah. it's a reasonably, it's a reasonable measure. It's a reasonably mm -hmm. reliable measure. And uh, just as a, you know, a daily tool to see, to estimate that what percent of their best physical mm -hmm. state they're at. So we can see, you know, for sure if uh, they're motivated to do their jumps and their jump scores are still low because of fatigue or illness mm -hmm. or whatever, we can adjust, you know, we can adjust their plan, we can adjust their volume, we can, uh, you know, scale things back a bit and keep it, keep it simple if we do. And that, that is something that we've really started to do, you know. At first it was just a big experiment to see. You never know what you're going to do mm -hmm. with the data until you, you try. And it's a big undertaking Absolutely. to keep track of that <laughs> stuff every single day. It's Absolutely. a lot of data and it's, uh, you know, it's not a crazy amount of work, but it's, it's definitely uh, work that, you know, takes for, you know, uh, amongst our coaching staff is probably, you know, one, call it one man hour per day yeah. that has to be done every single day. So it's just required a lot of discipline mm -hmm. and then to have a good, you know, workable uh, method to store that data and compare that data and share that data. Yeah. And so now that we've been doing it for a couple of years, we kind of have that. And the first couple of years we, we took that data, but we really didn't use it very much mm -hmm. because you kind of have to get to know it for a considerable amount of time before you can actually use it or use it in a meaningful way. Yeah. But I kind of feel like, you know, it's one of those little experiments that has been worthwhile and we do, we definitely use it now. Excellent. Yeah, no, it's very interesting. One of the things you brought up today was a um, particular athlete who was uh, <clears throat> 11 or 12 percent below his peak height or peak jump height, and and uh, we weren't on the hill today. But it's something that would uh, would obviously be a uh, be a warning sign of okay, maybe we should back off. This guy's this guy's training load today as we kind of get ready. And yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But, but yeah. Anyway, thanks, Rob. Thanks, Ryan.